guys, this is lesson 12-2, and it's double distributive property to multiply polynomials. So double distributing is um, kind of like distributing on steroids. We're going to be multiplying each term in the polynomial by all the terms in the second polynomial. Okay. If you talk to your parents or um, an older sibling, they might have learned um, something called FOIL. FOIL works great if you have two binomials. And how FOIL works is you multiply x times x to get x squared. That's f for first, the first term in each polynomial. Outer means multiply the x and the 2, plus 2 by the way, and get a positive 2x. Inner means the inside, the plus 1 times the x for the x. And the last, the plus 1 is last in the first parenthesis, and the plus 2 is last in the second parenthesis. Okay? Then, after you're done, you have these terms, and we've added the plus signs because these were all positive. But you'll notice that in the middle, you have like terms that can be combined x squared plus 3x plus 2. But not all uh, people call it FOIL, and FOIL kind of breaks down later on in the lesson where we don't just have first, outer, inner, and last terms. We actually have more terms than that. So we have this other way of describing it, which is double distribute. We're going to do these three problems, but I'm going to zoom in. Okay, so in this problem, I've got x plus 2 and x plus 3. And what it's asking us to do is multiply those things. So to set this up, I'll write x plus 2 in parentheses and x plus 3 in parentheses. And what double distribute means is I'm going to start with the x. And I'm going to pretend that's all I'm distributing. So x times x and x times a plus 3. Well, x times x is x squared, and x times a plus 3 would be a plus 3x. Now, I'm going to pretend the x does not exist. I already dealt with the x, and I'm going to go to the plus 2. And it's very important to consider the sign that's in front of the 2, because if that was a subtraction sign, there'd be a whole different sign issue. Okay? So that's going to be a 2 times the x and a 2 times the 3. So plus 2x and plus 6. All right, so now we've double distributed. What's left is combining like terms. So in the middle, we've got a plus 3x and a plus 2x. And when we combine our like terms, we will get x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now we're going to switch over to problem B. And we've got the same idea. We're going to have x plus 2 in parentheses, that's our first binomial, and x plus 4, there's our second binomial, and we're going to double distribute, starting with the x, x times x, and x times 4. x times x is x squared plus 4x, and we'll go to the 2, plus 2x, 
plus 8. And then we'll need to combine our like terms in the middle. So x squared plus 6x plus 8. Well, what if there's coefficients? We have a 2 in front of the x, we have a 3 in front of the other x. Well, we're still going to double distribute. So we've got 2x times 3x, and that's 6x squared. 2x times plus 1 is plus 2x. 3 times 3x is plus 9x. And 3 times 1 is plus 3. Then we'll combine our like terms. So 6x squared, because that's a squared, it, it's not a like term with the other x terms because it has an exponent. 2x and 9x make 11x, and plus 3 doesn't have any x, so that's also not a like term. Alright, on this next page, we're going to look at our two different forms, side by side. Okay, we've got our factored form and our standard form. So I'm going to go to my y equals, and I'll type in first the factored form. Then I'm going to type in my standard form. Because, uh, let's see, zoom six. Yep. When I run the graph, the blue graph comes in, that's the factored form, and then the red graph comes in right over top of it, that is the standard form. So why am I showing this to you? I'm showing this to you because it's a way of checking if your factored form and your standard form are the same. If the graphs didn't come out the same, it would mean that you double distributed incorrectly. And in the future, when we're going backwards, when I'm, ask, I'm giving you the standard form and asking you to find the factors, it's a way of, to, of knowing if you did your factors correctly. So all the examples we've done so far have included all positives and adding. So we've got to get into some sign issues so that uh, that's inevitable. Sign mistakes happen. So we're going to talk about it. All right, so I'm going to set up this first problem. Okay, and I'm going to use some um, Instead of drawing the lines for the distributing, I'm going to just uh, use some highlighter circles. Okay, so we're starting with the 3u. Three 3u Three times 4u would be 12u squared. Now, when I multiply 
3 and 6, yeah, we get 18, carry down the u, but since the 3 is positive and the 6 has a subtraction, remember when we take the 6 out of the problem, the subtraction sign is only a subtraction while it's in the problem. When I take the 6 out and look at it individually, that sign becomes a negative. So a positive times a negative would be a negative 18u, and then when we plug the 18u back into the equation, the negative becomes a subtract. Now I'm going to double distribute the 17. 17 times the 4u. 17 is plus, 4u is positive, so this is plus, and 17 times 4 is 68u. And a plus 17 times a minus 6 would be a minus 102. Okay, as always, I've got to do my middle term. Okay, 12u squared stays the same. A minus 18u and a plus 68u is a plus 50u. Okay, so I know that it's a plus sign in the middle of those two things, but the 18 is subtracted, and when we think about this problem with just those two pieces, we have to treat that um, subtraction sign in front of the 18, we have to treat it like a negative when we're just looking at those two pieces. All right, next we've got 8x plus 16 and 6x plus 3. So 8x times 6x is 48x squared. Eight x times a plus three is plus twenty four x. Eight x times six is plus ninety six x. And 16 times a plus 3 is also 48. Middle term has to be combined. 48x squared, 24 and 96, they are both plus. So 24x plus 96x is plus, let's see, 10, 120x, and bring down our plus 48. Okay, so C, we've got 7y minus 14 multiplying 8y minus 4. 7y times the 8y would be 50, oh, got to be on pen there, Andrews, 56y squared. Seven y times a minus four is a minus twenty eight y. Minus fourteen times eight is minus a hundred and twelve y. And the minus 14 times the minus 4 is plus, remember a minus times a minus makes a plus, okay? 14 times 4 
is 56. So we've got 56y squared. I've got a minus 28y and a minus 112. So we're subtracting two different amounts. So that means I'm subtracting 140y and plus 56. And here's our last example. All done. Um, somebody asked in class whether we always have to multiply in the exact same order all the time. And my answer to that is you should. And the reason for that is, first of all, habit. And second of all, um, when we multiply in the, this order, we end up with an answer that is in standard form. Standard form doesn't mean the three terms in any old order. Standard form means we start with the square term, then we go down to the y, the um, single variable, and then we go down to the constant. We have our a, our b, and our c in order. And that's crucially important as we go forward with quadratics that our uh, standard form is in order from highest exponent to constant. We don't want to forget about regular old distributive property because that is still going to be uh, a part of us for quadratics. Okay, so if I multiply 2x times x, I get 2x squared, and 2x times 3 is a plus 6x. That's still a quadratic, even though it does not have a plus c. Okay, there's no plus c, it's still a quadratic. And down the line, we're going to be factoring uh, quadratics that look like that, that will factor back to a single monomial and then a binomial in parentheses instead of having two binomials. So we still need to remember single distributive and how an x multiplies another x. Okay, so 5x times 7x and 5x times minus 1. 35 x squared minus 5x. Here's where the whole FOIL thing uh, breaks down. If somebody uh, at, at home tries to talk to you about FOIL, here's where it kind of breaks down. So I'm going to start with x, multiplying everything through. We're going to distribute the x to the second set of parentheses. So x times x squared would be x cubed. Because remember, there's an imaginary 1 here. So 1x one and then two more x's, that's x cubed. x times a plus 3x is a plus 3x squared. And x times a plus 1 would be a plus 1x. Now, you don't need the 1, okay? But I'm putting it anyway. And you'll see why in just a second. Then I'm going to take and I'm going to move my distributing circle over to the minus 5 and move my blue circle back to the beginning. Now, you can, when you continue to distribute, you can continue distributing in one big long string with six terms in it. I discourage you from doing that. Let me show you a cool little hack that makes things easier for you. Instead of putting the minus 5x squared here, okay, instead of putting that there, I am going to put it underneath the 3x squared. Why? Because then my like terms line up. So when I go to simplify and combine like terms, they're right next to each other. And it's just going to be that much easier for me to not miss a sign or make some other kind of silly mistake. Okay. So minus 5 times a plus 3 is a minus 15x. And a minus 5 times a plus 1 is a minus 5. 
So lining up my like terms makes simplification easy. X cubed comes down. A plus 3 and a minus 5 make a minus 2. Bring down my x squared. A plus 1 and a minus 15 is a minus 14. Carry down the x. And minus 5. Let's watch that one more time. So we've got x times 2x squared would be 2x cubed. x times a minus 3x would be a minus 3x squared. x times minus 4 would be minus 4x. Then I'm going to go and to the 5, and I'm going to start all over again. 5 times 2x squared, and then they're both positive, so that makes this a plus 10x squared. A plus 5 times a minus 3 would be a minus 15x. Plus 5 times a minus 4 would be a minus 20. And with our like terms lined up, it's easy to simplify. 2x cubed plus 7x squared minus 19x minus 20. Last one, guys. So x times x squared, we've got x cubed watching our signs. The main reason I'm doing one more example is just to make sure we're being very careful with signs. x times a minus 8x would be a minus 8x squared. And x times a plus 16 would be a plus 16x. Here's where signs are going to go bananas. Minus 4 times x squared is a minus 4x squared. A minus 4 times a minus 8x is a plus 32x. Minus 4 times a plus 16 is a minus 64. Now we're going to be combining our like terms. If you subtract twice, then I'm combining those together, minus 12x squared. I'm adding 1648x and minus 64. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day.